Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias from The Automator, and uh, I'm really excited because we've been working on this Intro to Classes and Objects course, and I say we, and it's really Isaias, I've been helping with the outline and structure, and I'm reviewing it because I don't, I don't know classes, so ironically, I'm, I'm looking forward to going through the course myself. Isaias, you want to, let's talk a little bit about why someone should learn classes, because yeah. for me, it's been a struggle of like, hey, I used functions pretty well, right, I'm pretty mm-hmm. good at them, and mm-hmm. I can borrow someone else's class and kind of use it, but I haven't built them myself and stuff. And so right. from talking to you, I started getting excited about some of the <laughs> advantages of using classes. And let's, let's start to try to explain a little bit of what people get when they start to use a class. Yeah. So basically if, if, if we go uh, into the highest level of it, the main idea is making your code easier to read. That's the main idea behind it. Because every time you assign a class or an object into a variable, now that variable, wherever you put it, if you assign a meaningful name to it, it would make it clear what you're doing. And during the course, I will show examples of, for example, I assign the same object to two variables, like a person class, like I'm referring to a person, and I would assign person to me and person to you. So those are two variables that now it is clear for you that I'm referring to me or to you, even though they're both the same type of object. It's what I'm trying to say. Like, as soon as you assign kind of like meaningful variables, you will see how it helps you understand the code a little bit better. But the other things that you might find very useful is especially the, fa- the, the fact that you can use those as templates of code. You can have kind of like a template that later on you can extend or modify without touching the code. And that is really something that when I'm presenting the course, I will try to show a lot of examples for you to try to understand exactly what I mean by that. Because you say like, well, I would do the same with a function. I could just modify a function. And just that's... Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, but... and I was going to say, and, and don't get me wrong, because because everything you're saying, I'm mm-hmm. sure is perfectly accurate. But for people like me who don't understand this stuff, it, it sounds like a not a bunch of gobbledygook, but it's hard to, to conceive, <laughs> right? So let me break it right. down for, for people who are not programmers. Yeah. This is where it's great that, that you and I are so different at that <laughs> level, right? Because I can go... I heard what you said, but I'm like, but I don't get it. Stuff. Like, <laughs> what do I do with that? So, yeah. <laughs> one of the things is, and that's one of the ones, you know, I've insisted repeatedly is like, don't just give one example. And for God's sake, even though I still think it is good to have like the, the people example, like a, a mm-hmm. you know, a box example, whatever, but let's have real code examples too. Exactly. Right? So we're going to have, have a lot well, of examples yeah. in this. Because there's the one simple, like, I need to understand the concept, which is fine if you use, like, a dog, you know, example yeah, or whatever. exactly. But then there's real-world examples. But, like, one of the big things that, to me that I got really excited about was, you know, like, my Excel function library, right? Mm-hmm. For me, everything in that begins mm-hmm. with Excel, and then it has the same. And you're like, in a class, you can organize things however you want with whatever names. It doesn't have to all begin with the same things. Uh, but you, right. can, you can group your your code together by topic but they don't have to be exactly like that naming convention or whatever in it's really to me kind of thinking of it as a function library however it's got the dot notation you know object-oriented programming also which makes it really really simple and it's funny because until i started realizing using a class and seeing how easy it is to be able to use that dot notation right it's so much simpler (laughs) and easier to use compared to calling function calls all the time. Right. Uh, just to kind of like use that example that you just made about, you know, having a function uh, function library that all start with the same yeah. part. Imagine that instead of having to add to each function that name, you just put the name once on top. And now all the functions begin with that. It's right. the same. It's, right. it's basically the same. You say class Excel. And now all your functions just start with Excel. Right. That's it. So it is the same concept. And the other part is that if you have a function library, right, and they depend on one another, for example, one function depends on another. If you modify one of the functions, the other one breaks, for example. Mm-hmm. When you're doing with a class and you go ahead and extend the class, when you modify one function, you don't break the others hmm. because all the previous behavior stays the same. That one behavior that you changed 
only changes on the instance that you modified. So again, once I go ahead and explain and show real life examples and, you know, give you code that modifies certain aspects, you will notice what I mean by that. Because right now, just talking about it, it is going to be a little bit difficult to, yep. to get the, the idea of how that might be good. But once you see it in action, like I just extended one class and I didn't even have to modify my code and the code stayed working. And you say like, whoa, I just added a new pair of functions to that class, but the code that I already had, I didn't have to touch it. And you're going to be like, okay, that's interesting, you know, <laughs> but you will see, you know, you will see concrete examples of that during the course. Yeah. So we're almost wrapping up the creation of the course content. And I know you have a few more examples to, to work up to, to be able to give to people that they can play with and do. But uh, I'd say in a couple of weeks, we should have this thing hopefully live and ready to buy. So below me here, I'm going to put a URL that you can sign up to get alerts in case you're interested. And uh, we still haven't decided on pricing and stuff. I'm probably not putting it on Udemy. I don't, I don't know. We're still looking into that. But we're probably going to sell it directly to people. And yeah, so sign up if you're interested. I think, I like I said, I can't wait to go through the course myself. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested too. But uh, thank you. Right.